Hey everyone, it's Jason here, and um, I'm back at you with another video. So this one um, I'm excited about. It's a discussion review type video, which I love to make, but don't make as often because of the amount of time that that really goes into them. But um, today I'm excited to talk about Sarah Winman's novel, Tin Man. So um, Sarah Winman is a, a British novelist and an actor, and she's the author of two other novels, um, When God Was a Rabbit and The Year of Marvelous Ways, neither of which uh, I have read, but, uh, but I was so excited to read this one. I think it's been out for a while in the UK and maybe also in the United States, but it was uh, recently released here in Canada, and my good friends at Penguin Random House Canada sent a copy my way, thinking that, that I would love it, and they were right, because I did. So Tin Man is a, a short novel. This edition is just over 200 pages, and it's about um, two friends, Alice and Michael, and, and about the gradients of their relationship from childhood into adulthood. Um, you know, their relationship is, is made to stand against, you know, the joys and the sorrows and the traumas of, of lives. So this is love and loss and shame, um, illness and death. So through this two-part novel, we see the ways in which Alice and Michael make sense of the story of their friendship, uh, which no matter the circumstances that, that they are, are put through, um, can always be reduced to love. So I don't think I'm going to say too much about plot in this video because it is, it's so perfectly written and, and plotted and paced that it would be a shame to, um, to kind of impede that reading experience for those of you who haven't haven't read it yet yourselves. So I'm going to try to steer clear of, of topics like that and instead kind of go, uh, go thematically here. So um, generally reviewers have made the point that Tin Man is about, about reckoning with lives unled, um, you know, about, about seeing events and circumstances from a different perspective uh, too late, about the sense of, of loss and finality, literally and, and figuratively that comes with being uh, unable to turn back and do things over. So this novel charts the deep friendship between Ellis and Michael. Um, and you know, even though this friendship expands eventually to include a third person, Annie, Ellis's wife, um, you know, the, the novel is still very much about what happens to the love that existed between these two men. And, and what about the colors of their friendship that existed only between them, uh, sometimes in secret. But beyond the central theme, the novel is about so much else. You know, I think it's also a novel about masculinity. Alice's memories of childhood with Michael are entwined with memories of his late mother and a particular painting, a print of Van Gogh's sunflowers, uh, that, that represents beauty and freedom and truth and care in Alice's life. Um, you know, art is representation, and Alice draws, and Michael writes. And uh, his mother loves art and this way of, of communicating love and care in a household where such things are kept compact by an abusive father. Um, you know, art and beauty exists as like a metaphor for love and friendship, a way to represent that outside of words through, through the careful, uh, attentive eye. Alice's mother tells the boys in a scene early in the novel um, a story of Van Gogh painting sunflowers for his visiting friend uh, Gauguin's bedroom. Some people say it's not true, but I like to think it is. Painting flowers is a sign of friendship and welcome. Men and boys should be capable of beautiful things. Never forget that, you two, she said, and she disappeared into the kitchen. You know, there are several scenes that depict this surveillant force of normative... Uh, sexuality and masculinity. Um, you know, Ellis has a memory of his own, but it's a bit of a spoiler, so instead I'll turn to one of Michael's, uh, who recalls trying on his mother's clothing um, after, after she leaves the family and being caught by his father. I took off my clothes and put on a skirt first, then a blouse, a cardigan, and slowly I became her in miniature. She'd taken her good shoes, so I slipped on a pair of mid-height heels, many sizes too big, of course, and placed the handbag on my arm. I stood in front of the mirror and saw the infinite possibilities of play. I strutted, I pouted, the satin lining of the skirt clinging to my skin, electrifying the fine hairs on my legs. What the fuck do you think you're doing, said my father. 
I hadn't heard him come in. He repeated the question. Playing, I said. Get that stuff off and go to your room. I began to undress, burning with shame and humiliation. And the skirt, my father said. The skirt slid to the floor, exposing my nakedness. My father looked away in disgust. I want to keep this, I said, holding up the handbag. No. Just to put my pencils in. If you ever take it out of this fucking house... I waited for the conclusion of this threat, but it never came. My father disappeared downstairs and out of the front door, leaving me naked, bewildered, orphaned before my time. I was too young, too confused to understand fully what happened in that room. That my father had said so little had been the wound, though. For him, there was nothing to discuss because discussion would have made the moment real, just as my mother's departure had been so real. Instead, I was swept under the carpet to join her. And I think also this novel is deeply interested in care. There's, um, you know, Ellis's isolation in the wake of tragedy that really emphasizes his lack of care networks. Um, there is Michael who cares for an ex-boyfriend who is dying of AIDS during the AIDS crisis. Um, I think there are opportunities to explore this further, which, which I might like to do. You know, folks in, in like my English department and in the field generally say that uh, you have to read a book more than once to understand the story. And this is one that I would joyfully, um, and I say joyfully with full knowledge of the uh, intense and sad emotional work that's going on here, um, but I would joyfully read it again. Um, so, you know, once again, I want to thank my friends at Penguin Random House for sending this to me. Um, it was such a beautiful reading experience. I got a lot out of it. I loved it so much. I've been telling people about it, so thank you. If you have read Tin Man yourself or you're interested in reading it, please let me know below kind of what your thoughts are and then we can start a conversation down there. That's something I really miss about, about BookTube. I know I'm kind of erratic with my upload schedule, but, um, but I miss those kind of conversations. So if you have read it or you'd like to, please let me know below and we can start talking about it. Um, in the meantime, thanks so much for, for watching, and I will see you soon. Okay, bye-bye.